Can't feel spring football, man. Listen, dog, it's back. Spring football, football back. Spring game be coming up soon. Get it popping. In that water, find an emo. See, Palm Beach County be the craziest. Them Broad County niggas be the craziest. And them Dade County niggas be the wildest. Shout out to Bell Glaze and my niggas at Fort Myers. Salute to all my Florida boys out here on the ground. When niggas out here getting dough with that snow and the sunshine. Ducking nine, waiting at the port to bring in that order. Cause niggas like the pen don't what come cross that water. Welcome to South. I was born in the South, raised in the South. A Dade County nigga that was made in the South. Dog, I remember fresh off a of, um, fresh off a of miracle victory at Duke um, when Miami got a kickoff, pitched the ball 80 times. Mark Walton said he was down. I mean, Trace Howard said Mark was down. And uh, at the time, we had an interim coach, right? Yeah, Larry Scott. Larry Scott was the interim coach, uh, and they won that game um, and came back home and through all the melee. People wanted Larry Scott. They like what the team looked like under Larry Scott. And they wanted him to stay. But then Miami brings on Mark Rick. Big name. I won nine, ten games, 38 times <laughs> in the SEC. <laughs> Just couldn't win the big one. And I remember being at the press conference with Mark Rick here. Like, man, Miami has finally hired a real coach. My young thought process, how I was thinking before I knew everything that I know now. Um, I remember getting on the elevator with Vilma and Vilma telling me who the three guys were because everybody always wanted the same guys. Um, they wanted the, the, the Mississippi State coach who just like Mike Leach. Leach. Mike Leach. They wanted to bring back Butch. Butch. Yeah. But he wasn't on the short list. He wasn't on Butch the short list. Nah, uh -uh. I, think, I, I think it was Greg Shiano. It was Greg Shiano. Greg Shiano. Uh -huh. it, was, it was Greg Shiano that was on the list. I remember Vilma telling me that. Uh, it was Greg Shiano, and I think it was the guy that ended up going to the SEC, Mississippi, the coach. Um, uh, well, this doesn't got nothing to do with the story anyway. But from that day, the question was, was Miami, Mark Rick going to keep Mark Beard? And I think to all of us, it felt like a no-brainer that you keep Beard. And that was the beginning of me realizing how the politics of coaching, and it's not really about like who's doing a great job. It's kind of, especially in Mark Rick, from Mark Rick's standpoint, it's kind of about where my dogs at. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's kind of like where my dogs at. That's what I'm bringing with me. So it's not personal. But Beard went on to go to Tennessee, and then he's been a few places went to since Georgia. Right, been a few places since then. Toledo. But from that day. The Hurricanes fans, anytime that wide receiver position came open. Kevin Beard name was always. Kevin Beard name active. was always the first name yeah. that everybody that everybody wanted. And now Kevin Beard is is, is back. He's the coach. He's the coach this year now. Yeah, now Kevin Beard is back. I mean, just going back to the year that he was the coach, um, he ended up recruiting Omar Richards, Sam Bruce. Dante Mullins, the year before that, he ended up getting Lance, uh, Lawrence Kager. Mm. Um, so, you know, the question was, can Kevin Beard recruit? That's the, you know, that's the thing now. Now now it's more so of can they recruit? They don't really care about the development. They're like, man, can he, can he go out there and battle against Brian Hartline? And then I just put the names out to say, well, these are the guys he recruited while he was at you. Right. What, yeah. what, what did you hear, though? Like, what do you know from being on the ground, dog, being in the streets, like, was it him just having him being around where these big names were here, or was him evaluating these kids and like, hey man, look, what do you think it was? I think it was him building a relationship with the kids, um, evaluating, evaluating them, um, because you know the Sam Bruce thing was, you know, he coached Sam Bruce, 
You know what I'm saying? He knew Sam Bruce since Little League. So that situation is probably a lot different. Right. But evaluating Amar Richards that early. You know what I'm saying? He, he was on Amar before everybody else got on Amar. Where did, who, who identified Amar? You remember? Kevin Barrett. He did? Kevin Barrett. Um, we was on the mod before everybody else. You know what I'm saying? He identified Dante Mullins, Ed Gulliver. Mm-hmm. So um, his evaluation was I could get I could get guys in who I could teach. Right. You know what I'm saying? And um, his his relationship not with, only with the receiver group, but his relationship with the South Florida kids. Period. Right. Because all of them still had a relationship with him. Right. Even when he's at Toledo, they saying. You know, he's come down, he's recruiting for Toledo. Obviously, he's not winning some of the battles. He did get some kids up there, huh? Yeah, he got some kids yeah. up there. But he's not winning, you know, all the big ones. But he still got a relationship with South Florida saying, hey, I'm still Kevin Beard. I can come in here and build these relationships. Because he still knows a lot of these kids and the parents and stuff. So. Right. We start off with that, and then we roll right into spring football is upon us. I think the transfer portal took us right into spring football, um, all of that going on. And Miami has a full coaching staff, right? Full staff, full on-field staff so far. Full coaching staff. Um, and the concerns going in the spring is no longer coaches. Um, no, no, longer, no, no longer on-field coaches. No, I guess they worry about the off-field coaches. Guys. What about the off-field coaches? What do you worry about? I mean, um, okay, one of, the, one of the DB analysts, Coach, coach uh, Jeffries, T- Terry, he just got a um, – on-field job at Jacksonville State. Uh-huh. Um, Coach Strong just went back to Alabama. Yeah. <laughs> out the blue as an analyst, as which an we analyst. all, which we already figured like that's where he was going anyway. As an analyst, though. Yeah, as an analyst. Um, but you wanted to be IDC, though. Yeah, and like you know, he felt that he didn't get the proper. Um, so why not just go get a DC job? Uh, I'm, I don't want to speak on it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, it, it, okay. Um, and then um, who else? Uh, Jason Tater was was um, Dolphins wanted him. Mm-hmm. Not at, not at the defensive end coach, D line coach. They wanted him on the staff, on the defensive staff. And because Rod Wright ended up leaving the defensive end coach, leaves and go to Texas in right. the NFL. So now the defensive end coach job is open, which was like a. Uh, Ali Hoop, or you know, uh, you know, what I'm saying Ali Hoop for Mario to say, "Hey, here you go, Jason Taylor, that's your opportunity." Right. You know what I'm saying? A Hall of Fame guy, like easy. So um, he going to stay with, stick it out with UM, be the deepest end coach. Now you go to the secondary, um, leaving DVD. You know, a lot of a lot of the fans want DVD on field, but it's like, where can you fit DVD in? Right. Because um, the defensive coordinator is a safety coach. And Coach Adai coaches the DBs, too. So now you're saying, well, how can we, you know what I'm saying, right. fit them in? It's either we got to let somebody go or we just have to work with what we got. Right. So that's the off-field and on-field coaching situation. Yeah, that DVD situation, it's like it went from sugar to sh- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, that's just like it went from sugar to snake. Like, like, dang. Um, don't know how that's going to go. I mean, I, I, I know he I know he was supposed to eventually be on the field. I know that. I know that for a fact. It hasn't happened yet. Uh, don't look like it's going to happen, right? Not right now. No. Nah. Right the, um, the, only, the only situation I can see it happening is if someone leaves after spring. It had to be something like that. But as of now, it's like nothing's going to happen. Um, yeah, nothing's going to happen. And, and I, I figured that it could happen. I didn't know that they were going to get an um, a inside linebacker coach. When they hired Nicholas, um, that's when I figured, yeah, it's not going to happen. Right. Because I felt, well, maybe they just put DB, DVD as a cornerback coach mm-hmm. and let Coach Lance – you know, do the linebackers, and you still got Rod Wright there, but it didn't happen. So we're like, oh, okay, yeah. And then he hires some 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 local guys, right? I mean, for anybody that want to cry, crab. I mean, 
He hires Beard, who's recruiting one time. Then he hired Tim Harris. I don't know his background in recruiting. I mean, um, Tim Harris was currently recruiting our two running backs who coming in this year, Mark Fletcher and Chris Johnson. He was recruiting them hard at Central Florida. What you mean? Explain. He was he was their main recruiter. Um, you know, uh, when 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 UM hired Tim Harris, you know, Mark Fletcher was like, "Yeah, man, that was the guy who was recruiting me at Central Florida. He was, that was the only reason I was thinking about." Him. Visiting right. them. Right. You know, so um, people saying, well, who, who, who does he recruit? Like, and they, they forget, like, because, you know, he, his name still is, is in South Florida. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? But Has people, he, have you heard him pulling? Give him the telly treatment, X. No, he hasn't. He hasn't, pulled, he hasn't pulled in anybody big. He hasn't have you heard him pulling anybody? anybody? No? Nah, he hasn't pulled in anybody big. Um, but I don't think, I don't think him. He was was here for recruiting purposes, you know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. it, would, it would be no difference from Kevin Beard, you know. Um, we he didn't really recruit that good, but we ended up getting two good running backs, right? You know what I'm saying? So I think with with, with Harris' situation is him being familiar with the offense, right? He come from Mount Malzone, which which the offense has taken a lot of Malzone's um, run concepts and and and. Um, and they've added to Dawson's mm-hmm. offense in the past, and then you you pull Tim Harris, who was the running back coach for Malzone at UCF, and it, and it kind of worked. Probably came from Dawson, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Probably was a probably came from Dawson. Uh, as I'm realizing, these coaches don't know everything, so he probably was like, "Hey, man, bring in Tim." He, 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 we we we've been trying to implement some of Malzone's, you know what I'm saying, run concepts. We got a kid Jakari here. My zone had Cam Newton at yeah, Auburn. Yeah. yeah, bro, I'm putting this thing together, boy. Putting this thing together, boy. And then you can just, just look, you know, for future references. If, 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 if Coach Dawson does end up leaving after a couple years, you know, Tim, Tim right there. That's one thing. I've heard some former, former Canes said they believe Tim is a future OC, even maybe head coach. Uh, maybe how you, hear, how you carry yourself. I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe what they've heard from around in the circles. Uh, so he, 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 I mean, he ain't no different from his daddy. So it's like, if you know the dad, then you say, yeah, he, he's can he be a head coach. I don't know nobody like a daddy. <laughs> he, I mean, he ain't no different. Not he, not that much different. Yeah, you know him. Yeah, I know them. If you put them side by side, yeah, you talk to the, you close your eyes, talk to the daddy, you close your eyes and talk to Tim. You know, I'm like, man. Yeah. Yeah, that's, they, they related. Right. How long was Tim at UCF? Tim was at UCF for what, three years, I think? Three or two three? years? Three okay. to, I think two to three years. Two to three years. All right, so, so yeah, so, so, so that's that. Rolling in the spring, bro, a lot, lot has to happen. Um, new defense, new offense. Uh, a few things outside there is the normal getting into, uh, I want to see what the running backs or IRC was doing. Two things I want to see, the tempo of practice. Because I remember when Lashley came, he changed the whole entire tempo of practice, and it made me realize what a, a fast-paced tempo offense does to the entire team. Um, if you got to practice at this pace. Um, and another thing is, Injuries, bro. Anybody sprain the goddamn ankle, bro? I think I'm gonna have to go to get a psychiatrist and send somebody chair and talk to somebody, dog. Because after all the recruiting and going hard and this, that, that, if your team ain't healthy, dog, you you can't you done. Can't, yeah, you can't operate at all. Right. So those are two two things outlier things that that I'm, I'm I'll be paying attention to. Um, yeah, that's that's what I said last night on the space. I was like, man, I want to see the availability of who's there. Right, because on paper it's looking like, hey, we might have a pretty decent team, but it's like, hey, yo, when you think about it, oh, such and such not gonna be there, such and such not gonna be there. Oh man, right. Such, such. Now you start saying, damn, we we not even healthy enough to have a decent team. Right. Right. So, um, so so yeah, we got a we got a a, a mock, uh, uh, basically a mock like a depth chart. We eventually um we, we're gonna drop on you guys um. A lot of spring guys are on there. Some of the recruits that's coming in are on there. Um, but the guys who won't be in spring, Chase. Chase Smith won't be there. Javante Citizen won't Citizen be Citizen won't be there. Right. Arroyo, Arroyo, Arroyo won't be there. Won't be there. Um, um, we, didn't, we haven't got an official list from you yet, but we're just going off of, will Chaney be there? 
Yeah, Chaney's active. Chaney's he's been working out every day with the team. He's active, so he'll be there. I, we, or, the, or the space left, like a lot of people were saying, it's not a good idea. Like he didn't got nothing to prove. Just get get to the season. You you think you think at this point it, either you can do it or you can't. Type yeah, shit? yeah. It's yeah. Either, it's, um, I'm gonna put him in a like you know I called the last night when I said TVD is now a level. I'm gonna put chain chain in that same category. It's now a level. Right. You're either going to do it or you can't. You know what I'm saying? So um, we at that point. He's going to be a a red shirt sophomore thing. Um, it's not enough. You gotta. If you can't do it, you can't do it. You know, we gotta start thinking about. Now we gotta go get some kids out of the portal. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because um, at the end of the day, you know, the coaching staff they have a job. Right. Yeah. Right. I would love to see Bashad take the snap. Of <laughs> Twenty-one blasts or something too, man. I would love to see Bashad give that a shot, bro. Uh, we got into it last uh, or last night on the space about if you think about Brashad's career, him being a running back, his old youth football career, converting to a wide receiver at Palmetto, which Palmetto wasn't really we, we wouldn't call it prolific passing, like we wouldn't call it Palmetto running shoe. We wouldn't we wouldn't say that Palmetto successfully passed the ball <laughs> ever, ever really. You know what I'm saying? The offense was kind of like the Achilles heel in the, in the midst of all of that. Um, so think about Brashad trying to develop in the midst of that. I think he began developing last year in the second half of the season. I saw the confidence. Yeah. I saw the coaches talking to him um, with confidence and, and, and uh, with the attaboys. But that's what he, he's been trying to develop into the position. And this is what, year three? Yeah, year three for him. I would love to see him take a few snaps. Uh, at, at running back, but I don't know if that's doing him any justice. I don't know if that helps him. Um, I mean, it helps him in, in this offense because he won't just specifically be a slot receiver. You know, they can use him coming out of the backfield. Mm -hmm. um, you know, stuff like that. It won't just be focused on let's go. You you the slot receiver and go run this rock. Blah, blah, blah. Nah, we can use that backfield. Right. We can put you in the backfield. You know what I'm saying? With with, with another running back. You know, right. Stuff like that. You know. Confuse the defense, you know what I'm saying? Because if he's in the backfield, then nine times out of ten, a linebacker got to cover him. Yeah, that's a mismatch. Right. So, it um, I think it, uh, this offense benefits his 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 skill set. Um, what I mean, we have to we just have to come to the conclusion that he's not your traditional wide right receiver. I think coaches in college who coach him understood that. Right. Which is why they're not focusing on him just being playing no receiver. Coaches where? Coaches who have coached him in uh -huh. college so far. Yeah. Um, with Lashley. Right, and, right, right, uh, right, 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 right. So it's, they saying, well, you know, we, we just going to have to utilize you the best way we can. I think the, the issue has always been, okay, nine times out of ten, when he does get in the game, I think the other team understands, okay, well, they finna try to get you shot the ball. So now it got to be, well, we can't put him in the game where it's so obvious that he's going to get the ball. It got to be, well, he's in the game. Right. And maybe he's gonna run a route in the past and not thrown to him. So yeah. the defense can be like, oh, okay, well we we know he's not getting the ball no more. Right. So I think that's where this offense benefits him a lot, because he could just be in the game now. I don't know, bro. I just think about I remember how Ole Miss would bring Elijah Moore out the backfield. Like, isn't it isn't it obvious if you got somebody like him? Like you like you can put a package in where he can come out the backfield or you can give him a, a toss. And it's, it's like you don't, you know what I'm saying, you really don't know. Because if you could bring Elijah Moore, who's a wide receiver, and line him up in the backfield and send him, you could obviously do it with a kid that yeah, you can. that could possibly be in the backfield. I, I, don't, I don't know, bro. Uh, he has, what, three more years, two more years? Two more, two two more yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. yeah man, I can, we got to see something out, out, out of B um, um, this year. Um, or, or, man, maybe he may have to go back to what he – what do you love? You think he's, he's done enough on special teams? No, he hasn't done no? enough. No, he hasn't done enough. Hey, man, y'all make sure y'all like, share. If you want to become a member, I see people still ask those questions. I don't know how, man. The join button. You hit the join button right there to become a villain. Get into the, the villain group, me, man. Hit the join button. Become a villain. Villains. <laughs>